My name is Dr. Les Anderson, and I'm a beef extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. The purpose of this short video is to briefly describe the methods for pregnancy diagnosis by rectal palpation in beef cattle. Again, this will be a brief demonstration um, just to give, get you started with your understanding of the palpation process. The materials you will need to, to do rectal palpation are palpation sleeves, and a little bit of AI or palpation lubricant. The best understanding of palpation really comes from an understanding of the orientation and anatomical uh, uh, components that you're going to be searching for when you palpate. First of all, the uterus, and this is just a very crudely made uterus and cervix that we can use for demonstration, lies typically in or near the pelvic cavity, the pelvic opening, and it lies directly underneath the colon of the animal. Its location underneath the colon allows us to insert our hand into the rectum and palpate through the rectum onto the reproductive tract. Okay? So typically an open animal with the cervix and the uterus with two horns lies inside the pelvic canal of the animal. So our process when we're pregnancy diagnosing is we will go in, flatten our hand and sweep along the pelvic floor like that. Our objective when we get on this side is to find the reproductive tract and be able to get our fingers around it. The red structure that I have a hold of is indicative or is meant to represent the cervix. The cervix is the landmark structure in beef cattle palpation because it's the only structure in there that is very hard. The cervix is made predominantly of cartilage and cartilage, of course, is close to bone in substance and structure. So when you palpate the cervix, when you grab the cervix, it will be hard, okay, instead of a soft tissue. So we're going to sweep the pelvic floor, crowd the tissue to the side, and try to find the cervix. Once you have identified the cervix, typically when I'm pregnancy palpating, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pick up on the cervix or I will try to manipulate the cervix a little bit within the pelvic canal. What this does is this gives me an indication of whether or not the cervix is heavy and tipped or if it's light and movable. When a cervix is heavy and tipped down like this, that's a pretty good indication that there is fluid, a calf, and pregnancy at the end of the cervix. So typically, in an open situation, the, the animal, the cervix and uterus will be movable. In a pregnant situation, it will be at the end of the pelvic canal, pointed down, and extremely heavy. Once I locate the cervix, I'll then roll, rotate my hand on top of the cervix, keeping a gentle pressure down so that I can feel it on the palm side of my hand. I will stretch my fingers out and move forward, trying to find the presence of the uterus and whether or not there are fluid and pregnancy components in the uterus. In this situation, the one that I have indicated, I'm able to feel the separation of the uterine horns and slide my hand up the horns, squeezing them to determine whether or not there is fluid in the uterine horns. When the animal is open, as indicated by my crude uh, representation, you will be able to squeeze the uterine horns, feel the soft tissue but also 
feel that there is no fluid in the horn. Determination, and in particular, estimating gestational age is really difficult in cattle. Um, as we've already demonstrated, finding the cervix, palpating an open uterus, of course, is very key to determining the difference between open and pregnant cattle. When you try to stage pregnancy in cattle, it's much more difficult. Again, you'll find the cervix, you'll move forward, but this time, instead of finding the empty uterine horns, you're gonna find one horn, or maybe both, that have fluid and then either placental and placental membrane and fetal uh, and the fetus with it, okay? And so that at 60 days, the entire uterus, you'll be able to get on the uterus, the entire uterus feels about like a softball and one horn will be that big and you'll be able to squish and feel fluid and the calf will be the size of a mouse. By the time you get to 90 days, the uterine horn is the size of a basketball. You can get around it. Again, it feels like a squishy, kind of soft water bag. And the calf is the size of a rat. Head about like that, body about like that. At 120 days, you're no longer able to get around the extent of the uterus. You feel bumps on the surface of that soft water bag and the calf is the size of a small cat. Okay, head about that big, body about that big. By 150 days, most of the time, the calves have fallen all the way to the belly of the, cat, uh, of the animal. It's very difficult to reach them. The calf is the size of a small dog with a head about like that and you'll be able to feel those, those uh, big bumps on the surface of the uterus. To palpate pregnancy, certainly the most important material needed is a palpation sleeve. Typically, particularly if you're, if you're uh, inexperienced at palpation, I highly recommend that you use the thinnest sleeve that you can find so that the transfer you know, of the tissue to your, the palm side of your fingers uh, is, is, is easier so that you can feel what you're doing. Some of the, some of the uh, rectal palpation sleeves are really thin, others are really thick, and particularly if you're inexperienced, I highly recommend the thinner ones. Again, fill your palm with palpation lube. Go to the animal who is hopefully restrained, lift the tail and wipe the, the lube on the rectum. Cup your hand and twist a little as you insert to help ease the insertion. Once you get in the pelvis, you'll flatten your hand Find the bone and sweep along so that your hand is, is kind of crowding the, the, the tissue off to the side. Once you get over there, squeeze your hands together and you're trying to find the cervix. In this animal, uh, I found the cervix right about here. It's inside the pelvic canal and it's about the size of my pinky. I'll put my hands around the cervix and kind of move it a little bit to see if there's any weight to the reproductive tract and there is not. I'll then put the cervix down so that I can feel it on the palm side of my hand and I'll slide forward trying to find the bumps, okay, the bifurcation, the split of the uterine horns and if I can identify and palpate each uterine horn independently. In this animal, I have the right horn in my hand. I'm just moving up the right horn, gently squeezing 
and I'm not able to find any fluid in her horns. So this female is non-pregnant or open, and if this is at the end of the breeding season, certainly it'd be an animal that we'd be looking to sell. That was a quick and easy demonstration of rectal palpation for pregnancy in beef cattle. The main thing that, that producers usually learn when I try to teach them how to do rectal palpation is that it is a very difficult and it takes quite a bit of practice. And therefore, if your desire is to have accurate information, your best bet is to, is to hire a veterinarian that's ex that is experienced in rectal palpation to come and perform those palpations for you. Typically, you're, you know, you're looking at a cost of five to $10 an animal, depending upon how many animals that you have and the trip charge and so forth. But again, I highly recommend using experienced technicians to get the job done because that will be how you're most satisfied with the results. For more information on rectal palpation for pregnancy diagnosis, contact your local county extension agent for agriculture or go to our website at www.ca.uky.edu and follow the links to extension publications and find the publication on rectal palpation.